All right, guys. Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Karen Colwell, and I'm the owner and nutrition coach here at B3 Gym. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining me tonight for this month's free virtual nutrition talk. If you do have any questions at any point as we're going through um, our content today, uh, you can type it in the chat box, you can write it down, I'll open it up for questions at the end. Um, so today we are going to go ahead and talk all about mental health and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so y'all can see what we have going on here. So I'll go ahead and share our screen here and we will kick it off. All right, so just a quick reminder before we get into it today, um, here at B3 Gym, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition shouldn't be complicated. And this is why we focus on a simple habit-based approach to help you reach your goals one step at a time. And our nutrition program is backed by Healthy Steps Nutrition, who has helped over 40,000 people all around the world take control of their health. And here are a few of our very own incredible success stories. Kathy and Todd are both on the talk tonight. Awesome. Um, so it is simple. However, it's far from easy, as many of our nutrition clients can attest. But we are here to help you take control of your health, uh, just like our most successful clients have already done. All right, so since the beginning of the pandemic, the world has seen a significant increase in rates of anxiety, depression, substance abuse, and suicide. Even more, it's estimated that nearly half of adults facing these issues are not currently seeking treatment. Uh, so today we're gonna talk about what mental health is, why it's so important, and we'll give three ways that you can start prioritizing your mental well being. So let's start with the what and why of mental health. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. Dr. Christina Megliera, a psychologist and a fellow CrossFit affiliate owner, describes our mental health as the driver of our car and with the car being our body. So if we think about that for a second, the driver decides where and when we're going to turn, how fast the car is going and the ultimate destination, where we're going, right? Our mental health affects how we think, how we feel, and how we act. Our mental health affects our ability to handle the day-to-day -day stressors, our ability to relate to our surroundings, and each choice or decision we make throughout the day. So obviously, it's pretty important. If we're not prioritizing our mental health and it starts to decline, our ability to make healthy decisions also is going to decline. And while our mental health affects our ability to handle stressors and what decisions we make, it has far more impact on our body than we might think. People with depression have a 40% higher chance of developing cardiovascular disease, according to the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Additionally, those battling with depression have an increased risk of diabetes, stroke, general pain, osteoporosis, and even Alzheimer's. Researchers are exploring the many physiological changes that might play a role. They found that many systems in the body are impacted by mental health, such as increased inflammation, changes in heart function, hormone levels for sure, and metabolic differences. So let's dive into three ways that you can start prioritizing your mental health. Tip number one is gonna be schedule time to move, move your body, right? Have you heard the phrase movement is medicine, right? Exercise has been shown to reduce depression and anxiety by over 30%. According to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, Exercise has been proven to treat a variety of mental health conditions, including depression, anxiety, eating disorders, bipolar disorders, schizophrenia, addictions, grief, dementia, personality disorders, right? The list goes on and on and on. Exercise can also be used as a standalone treatment for some mild conditions or in conjunction with other treatments for more severe issues. So how does movement have such an Im a significant impact, right? Exercise increases levels of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine in our brains. The increase of these important neurotransmitters ultimately leads us to feeling mentally healthy. So exercise will enhance our mood, 
and our energy while also decreasing our stress. Movement can also improve our cognitive functioning and lead to higher self-esteem, which also can lead to improved social well-being. If you're not sure how to get started, here are a few things to consider when it comes to starting your fitness journey. Schedule your workout like any other appointment in your calendar. You wouldn't skip out on an important work meeting, so don't skip your workout, right? It is on your calendar. Make it happen. Get an accountability buddy to find and find a support system. So having someone to work out with is a great way to make sure that your workout actually happens. Find that person who's going to make sure that you show up and find a fitness community that provides positive social interaction. With many more people working from home, social interaction has become much more limited. So finding a fitness community can help provide that social outlet for you. Um, move in ways that make you feel good. That's another one. Workouts don't have to be super flashy or really intense. We want to find things that excite us and find things that are going to energize us. We want to take time to learn a new dance, go out for a walk, ride your bike, lift some weights, or uh, take the stairs at work. Tip number two is going to be to incorporate a balanced diet. This is something we talk about at the gym a lot with our nutrition clients. Many studies have shown that diets high in fruits and vegetables, modest in lean protein, and void of many processed sugars and foods are associated with a 25 to 35% lower risk of depression when compared to a typical westernized diet. So in a study published in the Psychology and Cognitive Neuroscience Journal, researchers found that in as little as one week, eating a Western diet can significantly alter brain function with participants of the study doing worse on learning and memory tests. Further, the Western diet was tied to overeating and increased cravings of sugary treats after consuming a regular meal. So eating a more uh, diet full of more processed food, sugary foods is going to make you feel a little bit worse. It's also going to make you overeat and have some cravings. So remember those neurotransmitters I mentioned. Ser serotonin is often known as the happiness hormone, but this hormone impacts our entire body, affecting things like sleeping, eating, feelings or mood, and digestion. Did you know that the vast majority of our serotonin receptors are actually located in our gut? So newer research is finding that a balance of good and bad bacteria in our gut is directly related to our diet and has a connection with conditions, including depression and anxiety. So what these findings are telling us is that when we aren't making the choice to eat a balanced diet, the balance of our gut, which is directly related to our mood, gets compromised, leading us to feel sadder and more unmotivated. To learn more about how the food we eat is connected to our mood, you can check out episode 34 of the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. In this podcast, Nicole and Dr. Uma discuss how refined carbohydrates, sugar, and processed foods increase the risk of mental health illness. They also discuss uh, what foods to prioritize to improve your mental health. So now that we know why incorporating a balanced diet is important to our mental health, here's the helpful tip to get you started. Plate method. The plate method is one of the easiest ways to reshape your plate when trying to incorporate more balance. You're going to fill half your plate with non-starchy vegetables, a quarter plate lean protein, and a quarter plate starchy carbohydrates. And of course, a mindful amount of healthy fat. In addition to balancing your meals, you should also try to balance your snacks. And snacks are a great way to stay mindful throughout the day, keeping you from feeling overly hungry, which can lead to binge eating episodes or shifts in your mood. Have you heard the term hangry, right? Uh, snacks, just like our meals, should also be balanced. So each time you sit down for a small snack between your larger meals, ask yourself, do I have a protein, a carbohydrate, and a fat? And here are some great examples of our snack options. You guys get that slide? Yep, there we go. Perfect. All right, so lastly, aim to drink 60 to 80 ounces of water each day. Research has shown that dehydration can cause or can increase your risk of anxiety and depression, 
among other mental states. So if you struggle to drink enough water throughout the day, try getting a dedicated water bottle that you can carry with you, uh, drink out of a straw. And if you don't enjoy the taste of plain water, um, try adding some citrus fruits to your water. All right, the next one, we're gonna talk about prioritizing positive self-talk. Uh, positive self-talk is one of those things that we hear about all the time, but maybe we haven't actually taken the time to learn about the impact that it can have on our mental health. A study discussed in the book Soundtracks by John Acuff found that stating positive affirmations just 20 times in a month had a significant effect on more than 10,000 people's mental well-being. And here's what the study found. <clears throat> so first the study asked, does repeating positive affirmation help decrease overthinking? And the answer is yes. Participants were 250% more likely to decrease overthinking. Further, those who said affirmations at least 20 times or more in the month were 46% more likely to decrease overthinking when compared to the group who repeated affirmations only five times in the month. Next they ask, does decreased overthinking increase productivity? Again, of course, yes. When comparing the group that said affirmations 20 times versus the group that said affirmations only 10 times, the 20 times group worked nine more days per month towards their goals. They also had a 21% higher satisfaction rating as they felt better about their work and got more of it done. <clears throat> Lastly, the study wanted to know if decreased overthinking increases overall success towards goals. And you can guess, yes, this is also true. People who decreased overthinking were able to complete 78% more of their goal. So the study found that the group was four times more likely to reach or almost reach their goal. So this study originated from Zig Ziglar's idea to incorporate, incorporate daily positive affirmations that are said either in the morning or at night in front of a mirror. So here's an example of what that might sound like. I'm a person with integrity, a great attitude and specific goals. I have a high energy level, I'm enthusiastic and take pride in my appearance and what I do. I have a sense of humor, lots of faith, wisdom and the vision and courage to use my talents effectively. So today I challenge you to identify two positive affirmations that you may or may not believe right now. And let's practice reciting them in the mirror every morning for the next two weeks and see what kind of an impact that can have on your mental well-being. And I know it may sound really silly and you're probably gonna feel really self-conscious when you stand in front of the mirror and talk to yourself, but try it out, trust the process and let's see what happens over the next couple of weeks. So before we move on to some important principles to wrap up for today, I wanted to take a moment to normalize the value of seeking out professional help. So I started seeing a therapist. I'm very open about this with my members uh, back in, 220, in 2020. Initially, I started uh, therapy to work through some trauma from a previous relationships. But as the pandemic continued, it became a saving grace for my mental health. Uh, running this business by myself has definitely taken its toll. So it's a great outlet for me to get that support that I need to stay focused and to stay positive. It's so easy to get overwhelmed by negative thoughts, especially when everything is going crazy. It's busy. The world is kind of falling apart. Um, it's really easy to feel overwhelmed, to feel anxious um, in those situations. So therapy is a great safe space where you can share your fears work through some uncomfortable thoughts and feelings. So if you're struggling with your mental health, I would highly recommend you reach out for help and um, try to find a therapist that you can work with. I think it's a great tool uh, for people in this current state of the world. So we know that all this information we talked about today can feel really overwhelming. So to start your foundation, there are a couple quick principles that have helped so many people take control of their health. Um, the first one is going to be to add more whole foods into your diet. We already kind of talked about the balanced diet. What we want to um, touch on again is that plate method, choosing whole food options, less processed foods that are packed with sodium and fat and sugars, reshaping your plate to fit this plate method model is a great place to start. Focus on balance. We talked about this as well. So all of your meals and snacks are having some sort of 
protein source, carbohydrate source, and fat source. It's going to keep you feeling full for longer. Limiting added sugar. American Heart Association recommends six teaspoons for women, nine for men, and the average person consumes 46 per day. So make sure you're taking a look at the nutrition fact labels and trying to avoid um, any of the added sugars in those foods. So now we're going to take a little bit of time here to answer some frequently asked questions. We always get the question, what should you eat around your workout? So fueling your around your workouts to gain muscle, lose fat, increase energy, any health and fitness goal, um, nutrition is going to be a big part of that. So you want to aim to have some sort of healthy carbohydrate and protein before and after your workout. You can't expect your body to function if it doesn't have any fuel. So if you don't like vegetables, this is another common question. <clears throat> you can try roasting them, um, different seasonings, different ways that you can cook them. You can blend them up in a smoothie, uh, just figuring out what's going to work for you so that you can start to get in more vegetables into your diet. So where should you start? One thing at a time. And it might be something that we talked about today. If it's the positive affirmations that you're saying to yourself in front of the mirror, you can start with that and build your way up. Uh, but the best and fastest way to reach your goal is gonna work one -on -one, is gonna be to work one-on-one -on -one with a nutrition coach. That way you can get a plan that is catered just for you, uh, taking into account your current lifestyle. So if you're looking for the perfect plan to help you succeed, it's simple, it's not easy, but we're here to help you along the way. So at B3 Gym, we focus on a habit-based approach to create that individual plan just for you. We work with you to build your nutrition foundation and create sustainable plan that can help you build into your current lifestyle. We know that support and accountability is super important when it comes to reaching those goals, which is why we're here to help you along the way. You can schedule a free intro session with me to learn more about our program. Um, and I would love to hear more about your goals and how we can help you reach them. And if you're looking to hear more about how this program can change your life, you can tune into the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. There's some great podcasts on here, lots of really helpful information and inspiring stories on there as well. So today we talked about what mental health is, why it's so important, and we gave three tips to help you start prioritizing your mental health. So these tips include daily movement, a balanced diet, and positive affirmations. Thank you so much for joining me for this month's nutrition talk. Um, we'll have another one coming up in June, so you can make sure to get registered for that. We'll have that topic coming out in the next two weeks or so. Uh, but again, I appreciate you joining me. Um, if you have any questions about anything regarding mental health and how that relates to your nutrition, fitness, anything like that, please reach out. I would be happy to help.